<clears throat> All right, everyone, pay attention. Look up here. All right, where are we? So the cat's out of the bag. We now know that two-dimensional numbers are the same thing as complex numbers. So now what we want to do is sort of solidify our understanding of complex numbers. All right. So first of all, 2D numbers. We're accustomed to thinking of 2D numbers as being in the x, y plane. And that's definitely a two-dimensional system. And in fact, we've been using that notation for points. However, now I think we want to understand that these are something much bigger than just points. This is a whole different number system. And so it's still two-dimensional, but we need to start thinking of these as numbers that have a real component and an imaginary component. Okay, so forget x, y axis, think real imaginary. That's what two-dimensional numbers really are. Now, that being said, we want to modify our notation so the distinction between these two things is clear. So, first of all, what was our old notation? Our old notation, we represented rectangular points as AB, like a point, and polar points as R theta. So we want to modify that now. We want to use some new notation. The new rectangular notation you are already familiar with, a plus bi. That means a complex number, a two-dimensional number, and this is the real part, and this is the imaginary part. So now we want to do the same thing in polar form, and we're going to use something called cis notation. So r cis theta, same thing as r comma theta, we're just writing it in a slightly different form to remind ourselves that we're talking now about complex numbers, not like um, points in the xy plane. Okay, so a reasonable question might be where does cis come from? Um, it's actually just an amalgamation of things you already know. So here's a conversion from rectangular to polar. A plus bi is r cosine theta plus r sine theta times i. So I'm going to rearrange that a little bit, pull the R out, and I've also moved the I in front of the sign. Okay, and that's where cis comes from. It's the C from cosine, the I, and then the S from sine. Okay, so cis just stands for cosine, I, and sine. So pretty straightforward. Let's look at a simple example. So let's say we were talking about the point which in the old polar form is 5 comma 72 degrees. In cis form, that would just be 5 cis 72 degrees. That's it. Pretty straightforward. Um, except your textbook, for reasons I don't fully understand, decides to take a really simple idea and make it more complicated. So they will actually write something in cis form, but they will completely write out the cosine 72 and the 5 times sine 72, and they'll have an I there at the end. So when you're working in your textbook and you see something that looks like this, just understand that they really mean this. But we should use cis notation. That is better. All right, don't do what the textbook does. Okay, another thing to think about, we now have two forms for writing a complex number. We have a plus bi and we have cis. So how do you know when you should use which form? This might be a good table to copy down into your notes. Um, so if you are adding or subtracting, then a plus bi is the best form. Um, and r cis theta is not a good form to use for addition or subtraction. You will have to convert it back to a plus bi in order to do addition or subtraction. Um, if you are multiplying or dividing, you can use either form. You can use a plus bi or you can use cis form. All right, we now know how to multiply in both of those forms. Um, interesting. If you're using exponents or roots, then you probably don't want to be in a plus bi form. That's going to be a lot of work. If you have 2 plus 3i and you want to raise it to the 7th power, easy to do in cis form, 
hard to do an A plus BI form. So A plus BI, best for addition subtraction, also good for multiplication. R cis theta, don't use it for addition. Use this for multiplication, division, and then exponents and roots. That's all there is to it. Okay, so now let's look at an example. And you're going to have a problem similar to this on your homework, I believe. So let's say, for instance, we have this equation. z squared minus 5z plus 31 plus 5i equals 0. This is a quadratic equation with complex coefficients. Okay, Sometimes people freak out when they see the z's. So it's really the same thing as if you had x's, except that x is now a two-dimensional number or a complex number. So forget the x, use a z. But we still want to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula works for all coefficients. They don't have to be real. So here's a negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. We can simplify everything inside the radical here, and when we do that, we get negative 99 minus 20i. Okay, so let's think a moment. This is a complex number in rectangular form, but we want to take the square root of it. So we need to convert it to cis form if we want to take a root. So let me recopy that. And now if I convert negative 99 minus 20i into cis form, I get this. Right? Wrong. Look carefully at this angle. Is this angle correct? This point would be in the third quadrant. This angle is in the first quadrant. So let's not make that mistake. Add 180 to it. Now we've got the right angle. Okay. How do I take the square root of this complex number in cis form? Well, I take the square root of r and I divide the angle by 2. Square root of r, divide the angle by 2. Now we can simplify this. Most of you probably recognize 10,201 as a palindrome and therefore as 101 squared and then the division here gives us 95.7 and some change degrees. Okay, now what? Well now we're trying to add or subtract that number so we need to take this cis form and convert it back to a plus bi form. So here's the cis form. I'm just going to convert that to a plus bi and as we have seen we often get nice numbers when we do that. Now, in my experience, this is where honor students mess up. We've gotten this far and done all the heavy lifting. Let's try to not confuse our signs here. We've got two possibilities, either 5 plus this expression, which will give us this, or 5 minus this expression, which will give us this. Not done yet. We can simplify those. And our final answers are 3 minus 5i or 2 plus 5i. All right. Simple, right? and fun. Okay, so remember, just because we call them complex numbers doesn't mean that they really are. Just take your time, be mindful of whether you are in A plus BI form or in cis form, and think about where you're going with these problems. All right, enjoy and have fun.